In this presentation, we will generate, analyze, print, and export to Excel a statement of cash flows. Let's zoom into it with Zero. Here we are in our demo company dashboard within Zero. Let's open up our major financial statements, that's being the balance sheet then the, and the income statement. And then we'll go to the other financial statement that we're looking into here, that being the statement of cash flows. So I'm going to be going over to the accounting. We're going to be selecting the drop down, going to the balance sheet opening up the balance sheet and then we're going to right click on the tab up top when that one opens and we're going to duplicate that tab we're going to go back to the tab to the left then we're going to open up the income statement the accounting drop down going to go on down to the income statement and the income statement will then open and i'm then going to duplicate that tab so i'm going to right click on the tab up top duplicate that tab and then the other statement that uh, it doesn't get as much attention is going to be the statement of cash flows. It's one of the core financial statements, but it's not one of the ones that we usually jump back and forth to when we do the data input process. We'll get a little bit more into that in a second. But to open it, we're going to go to the accounting. You'll notice it's not in the favorite reports here. It's not in the kind of default favorite reports. To get there, we're going to go to the reports up top. And then we're looking for the statement of cash flows. So here's the statement of cash flows. Note that the statement of cash flows can come in two different methods, a direct method and an indirect method. And we do have the direct method here. So that, you know, if so, if you need a preference between the direct and indirect note, we're opening up here the direct method statement of cash flows. As that opens up or when that opens up, I'm going to be right clicking on that and duplicating it. So there's going to be our information. I'm then going to go to all these. I'm going to go to the balance sheet first. I'm going to be changing the dates here. So I'm going to be taking the dates. Uh, it's in 2019. That's actually what I want. I'm keeping it in 2019. Now, the statement of cash flows. Now, you can think of it kind of as it, it is a major financial statement report. But uh, you can also think of it as, as giving you more information on the checking account. We're basically taking the financial statement information and kind of adjusting it from an accrual basis to a cash basis, con concentrating it on cash flow as opposed to other kind of objectives of the financial statement. So the bottom line of the statement of the cash flows will tie in then to cash. So that's how it, that's how we can kind of tie it into the financial statement. If I go to the income statement and I'm going to change this back to last year, I'm going to change this back to last fiscal year and update that. Now the statement of cash flow, the operating section, the first component of the statement of cash flow will basically be kind of like the income statement. Now the income statement is on an accrual basis method because the accrual basis method is better for comparison of performance period to period. However, it's also nice to know the cash flow. And so now we have the, the income statement, which shows us the performance on an accrual basis. And then the statement of cash flow, which gives us kind of the best of both worlds, because it could show us obviously the cash flow. So then let's go over to the statement of cash flows. I'm going to make this for the prior year as well. So I'm going to make this for last uh last financial year and so there's january through december there all right so statement of cash flows three sections on the statement of cash flows we've got the operating activities the investing activities and if we had items in the financing activities we would have financing activities there are no items here the statement of cash flows is like i said one of the major three financial statements however I mean, it's, it's, it's a core financial statement. So I would think of things as the reports where I would break the reports in your mind into financial statement reports, then all other reports, which are basically supplemental reports. So these three are the financial statement reports in my mind, everything else are going to be basically supplemental. Those are actually just report reports that are going to be supporting the major financial statement reports of the financial statement reports. The income statement and the balance sheet are the ones you're going to be working with all the time. Because every time you make an actual transaction, every time you enter a form, every time you make an invoice or a bill or a check or a payment, you, you kind of want to visualize what's going to be happening to the income statement and the balance sheet. Now, the income statement and the balance sheet, like we said, are typically on an accrual basis system. And we also want to know the cash flow. And that's where the cash flow uh, comes into play here. So that so the cash flow is going to be broken down into three components the first component by far is the most you know common kind of cash flow activity we have or the most complex section or the section we, we think about most often because it you can think of it as basically kind of like the income statement so the income statement here on is generally on kind of like an accrual basis method if we were to convert that income statement rather than on an accrual but a cash basis you can think of that as basically kind of like 
the first section back over to the statement of cash flows in the statement of cash flows the operating activities in other words the bottom lines of the operating activities in the statement of cash flows is net cash flow from operating activities which you can kind of think of as similar to net income on a cash basis right so you can kind of think of that as net income on a cash basis now typically there's two ways to get there to get to this net income on a cash basis you could think of it as well what if I went back to the income statement and I changed every line item to a cash basis? In other words, if I looked at the at the sales here, what in influences this sales item? If I go into the sales item, what's going to be the the driving factors that's that's going to cause this sale? Well, an invoice is going to cause the sale. An invoice increases accounts receivable and it increases income. There's no cash involved. So look at all these invoices here. Uh, on a cash basis, on a cash flow basis, we would have only the cash transaction. So we would have to wait till we actually get the money before we would record it uh, in, in the income. So the other one would just be a sales receipt if we had it at the same point in time. And that would, in, that would be a cash transaction. So I can think about it. Okay, I, let's just adjust the income line so that it's, so it's going to be triggering at the point in time we get the cash as opposed to on an accrual basis. So we could just change the in income line or fix it so that it's on a cash basis. We could do that for every line item, right? So on the expenses down here, for example, if I paid for it with a bill, I could say, well, that's not a cash transaction and I can convert it to a cash basis. Now that's actually more complex to do than you would think. And you could, I have a whole, we have a course on, on uh, cash flow statements if you're interested in that. If you can understand the actual conversion truly, then you have a really good understanding of, um, of the accrual accounting, double entry accounting system. So it's worth really kind of looking into but in any case that's kind of conceptually that's how that would work that would be a direct method and then if you converted every line basically you'd get down to kind of net income on a cash basis that's what's what's happening here on the direct method in essence you got the receipts from customers which is kind of like revenue on a cash basis we got the payments to suppliers and employees which are kind of like expenses on a cash basis and then we got the cash receipts from other operating activities right so we basically kind of converted those line items over. Now the, the direct method, there's also an indirect method. The indirect method, which is not what we're using here, they're using the direct method. The indirect method would be taking the net income and then backing out the, uh, the, the accrual activity. And you basically do that by taking the accrual account or, or the, the accounts on the balance sheet and taking the difference between the accounts on the balance sheet and, and you kind of reverse out. You're doing a reconciliation between the net income on a, a, a accrual basis and the net income basically on a cash basis. And a lot of times they kind of like the, the actual uh, indirect method because it does give you that reconciliation. It gives you the actual number change between the one and the other. It's, it's less intuitive to look at because it makes more sense to just go line by line down and convert it from an accrual basis to a cash basis. However, the benefit of the indirect method is that you get an exact reconciliation from one to the other. You're saying, hey, here's one point going to the other point. Here's the differences between the two. So that's just those items. This is the direct method here. And then we have the investment activities because there's other activities other than those items on the income statement that could be affecting cash. And the major investment activity is if we purchase or sell equipment. So, and, and that could be a little bit confusing because if you think of equipment, you think of it as an asset when we buy an equipment, for example, if we bought equipment like the computer equipment here, you, you think of it as an asset, but it's also kind of an investment. That's why we capitalize it. It's an asset because, and we didn't expense it at the point in time of purchase, even though we might have paid cash for it because it's an investment in the future. We're investing it in the future to help us generate revenue. So on the statement of cash flows, it's going to show up as cash that went out not as an expense, not in the operating section, but as in the investment section, because we invested cash in the company in the form of fixed assets in order to help us generate revenue in the future. So that's going to be on that item. If there were financing activities, uh, these are going to be kind of financing related activities. For example, if we took a loan out or something like that and cash went up because we got a loan or went down because we paid off a loan, those would be cash flows related to financing activities. All right, and then they're going to have cash and cash equivalents. So this is going to be the change in the cash, which is going to be the operating and the investing change in the cash. And, and that's the difference. That's what happened over the time period in cash. That's the change in cash. If we take that change and then add it to the beginning balance of cash, the cash at the beginning of the period, 
we should then get to the ending cash balance. And the ending cash balance is in this case 11773.13. That number should tie out to the balance sheet report. So the 11773.13. So that's how you kind of tie the, this whole thing in. The, the uh, statement of cash flows will tie in ultimately to the top line item of the balance sheet to cash. But we're not really just looking at, at cash. We're looking at the full cycle, the whole flow. Uh, and mainly we're looking at the activities, kind of the processes, the flow of cash, which is in essence the income statement, the activity statement, but looking at it as opposed to an accrual system from a cash flow system, kind of more like in a cash based basis system, the cash flow activities, statement of cash flows. All right, so that's that's basically it. Let's go ahead and print this out as well. We're going to be saving this into our reports. So I'm going to go ahead and export it. We're going to export it as a PDF file and it's going to open up as a PDF file. I'm going to put this into section four now. So now we're in section four, just going to pull this on over. All right. And there we have it. I'm going to rename it right now. I'm going to right click on the tab and rename it. It's going to be a statement of cash flows, statement of cash flows. Then I'm also going to print it in the Excel or I'm going to make it Excel or export it to Excel and we'll open this one up and I'm going to put all these other reports, so all the reports that we're going to make as we did in prior sections are going to go into this Excel file. So there it is. And actually I, I'm going to close this back out. Let's do it this way. I'm going to export it. We want to save this one. So I'm going to export it to Excel. I already have it there and I'm going to drag it into our folder again. So we're going to drag that into our folder. And so we have that. I think this is the easier way to do it of the two rather than opening it. And then I'm going to rename it and I'm just going to rename it other reports because I'm going to put a bunch of other reports in there. So other, other reports. And so we'll put a bunch of stuff in here and then I'm going to open that up and see what it looks like. Now I'm going to copy this to another tab just to get those grid lines and, and see all the formatting that'll match any other format that I copy over. So I'm going to, copy this i'm going to double click on the tab statement of cash flows then i'm going to go back to the first tab i'm going to select the whole thing with either the triangle up top or selecting control a right click and copy back to the second tab we got to be in a1 in order to paste it so i'm in cell a1 right clicking and paste then i'm going to make it a little bit larger i'm going to bring this up to 150 down here 150 and then see if it fits in on a page i usually go to the second tab here looks like it's fitting on a page back to the first tab and here's our grid line i'm going to make this a cell a a little bit longer to put the title on one line like so then i'm going to double click right on this tab so it it shortens the cell to to uh, maximize it there all right so there we have that and we're just going to save it there for now and we'll keep on uh adding to it with future reports i'm going to save this at this point and there's a large amount i'll just yeah yeah i keep that 